today we're going to save the same people that are like me that needed saving. I saved myself in 2020, and so now we're going to save some people today. What I'm talking about is gold bugs. I'm talking about gold bugs that are sitting around, you know, holding a bunch of gold, thinking that this is going to reprice one day, because that's the mission. The, pr the mission is we need to reprice the US dollar one day with our gold. And so as a former gold bug, as someone who promoted the investment in gold, as someone who, you know, uh, put my own money and wealth and put it into gold for a number of a number of years from 2009 all the way up until 2020 at a significant gold position. I want to walk you through exactly why Bitcoin is a better alternative to gold and is a better investment to gold. And then you can make your own decision. Up. But at least this is my impersonation of how gold bugs are waiting around for gold price to, to gold to reprice the U.S. dollar. This is what Robert Kiyosaki and all these other gold promoters told you was going to happen. Gold suddenly going to reprice itself and you're going to you're going to get super wealthy. What if you die before you get wealthy when it comes to gold? Right? That's the problem. There are fundamental flaws with gold that I want to cover here that I think everyone needs to be aware of. Then, if you want to have gold in your portfolio, it's totally up to you. But I think it's very important for you to be aware just like I became aware of the issues and just like my parents by the way i'm african indian i've only not only got the african i've got the indian as well gold is my entire lineage is is, is gold um and i was the first one to recover from that because you realize that gold isn't as limited as is presented to you gold also doesn't reprice as often as is presented to you and I want to break down some of these things that you can understand and then decide, okay, do I want to hold, continue holding my gold position and waiting like you just saw me wait? By the way, that waiting time period was 15 years. I don't know whether you, I don't know whether you picked that up or not. That was a 15 year waiting time period. That's what gold bugs have been doing, right? So the, let's go through some of the first issues with gold that I came up with and that really concerned me. Uh, and why I decided to sell my entire gold position by the end of 2020 and move it all into Bitcoin. Gold is touted as a rare, limited asset. And the reality is, is that how we measure hard assets is something called stock to flow. Now, a lot of people, if you've been looking around the Bitcoin space at all, then you're going to remember the stock to flow pricing model. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about the concept of stock to flow. Basically, what it means is, how many years of, of flow, of new flow of a particular asset does it take to replace all of the on-ground supply, stock to flow? And the longer it takes to replace all of the on-ground supply, the harder the asset is, right? And so for gold, it takes somewhere between 55 and 65 years to replace all of the on-ground supply with the new flow coming out on a yearly basis. Now, how is this affected? How is this actually controlled? There's several ways that it's affected and controlled. Number one, you have mining permits, right? So they might say, countries might say, we're gonna hand out mining permits for more gold exploration, okay? That's number one. Number two is the price of gold. If the price of gold goes up, more attention goes into digging gold out the ground, right? Because if the price of gold went up to $10,000, I wouldn't be wearing that ring. I'd be like, hey, take that ring and, and get me some Bitcoin. So. The gold has turned into this idea that because central banks had a, a minority percentage, right? It was 40% that the US dollar was backed by gold, that that's the currency that we need to step, step back into. And we have this, humanity has this weird virus where we think going backwards will allow us to go forwards faster. And that's not how it works. The point of gold is that it is limited. It is, cannot be controlled by human beings. It is controlled by nature. And we, you know, gold bugs were presenting the idea that we've hit peak gold, etc., etc. All of these little conspiracy theories about gold, like have we hit peak gold? This is thing, something that's being developed by Mother Nature, and everyone's talking about is it peak gold? This is put out there to continue the interest in ownership of gold. Because imagine if you found out that there is no such thing as peak gold. Right? It's just this year we might have less coming out the ground. Next year we might have more. There's no such thing as peak gold. 
you wouldn't be interested in owning gold. So all of the rhetoric is pushed out there saying, okay, you need to own gold because it's limited. It's uh, we've hit peak gold, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is just not true because more and more gold keeps getting discovered. I think Uganda they discovered a ton, more tons of gold uh, in Uganda, and gold just keeps being discovered. And as the price goes up. The incentives for dig discovering and digging more gold out the ground goes up because there's more profit to be made. So right now, the stock to flow of gold might be 55 to 65 years. But what happens when the gold price is $10,000 an ounce and every gold bug's wet dream comes true and the gold is repriced into US dollars? What happens in that scenario? Right. And suddenly, let's say it's $10,000 an ounce. You're looking at a metric shit ton of new miners coming into the market to try and mine more gold to sell it. And what does that eventually do? Increases the supply, brings down the stock to flow ratio, and ultimately rebalances the price. Now, the price might not come down back down to where it is, but it's certainly not going to stay at $10,000 an ounce as more supply hits the market. So gold is it, the the... Benefits of gold are true, but gold cannot keep up and cash the check that the gold bugs write for it because gold is is a past technology at this point, right? We can say, yes, gold has been the best money that we have found up until now. Complete sense. That's what clicked for me. That's what clicked for me because the true value of gold is the scarcity that the gold provides. But there's a reason why real estate is a bigger market cap than gold, because real estate is scarcer than gold. Even though it doesn't look like it, real estate has a 120-year stock-to-flow ratio. So it's 120 years to build all of the real estate again. So that's why real estate has a bigger market cap. And that's extremely important to remember. The second issue with gold is that we went through the biggest flu season that the world has ever seen. We went through wartime lockdowns. We went through the Armageddon scenario that all of the gold bugs, including myself at one point, were presenting. We went through this whole period of two or three years where the entire world, every single person, not one country here, not three or four countries here, the entire world was locked down and told to sit at home because the world is going to end. And gold went from 1500 to 1900 an ounce. It's like every single promise that these gold bugs are making you for keeping your wealth in gold doesn't make any sense. I'm going to show you a chart in a second to show you, right now we're going through the ideological reasons. I'm going to show you the financial reasons why it doesn't make any sense to hold gold. So we went through that period, and that period should have really allowed gold to shine, but it didn't. Why? Because gold is not as scarce as you think it is. Gold is not the asset that you think it is. It, it, the, the very fact that gold doesn't have finality or scarcity means that it can't cash the check that the gold bugs are writing for it. And that's very important to remember because at the end of the day, you are sitting there just like my parents are sitting there owning gold because they believe it's the right thing to do and gold will ultimately keep them safe. The best part about gold is that it's a bearer instrument, right? It's a bearer instrument. I can take that gold, unlike my property or my stocks, then I can go across a border and still have value. You know what else is a bearer instrument on that small scale? A Rolex a watch, a timepiece, a ring. All of these things are bearer instruments that you can use in certain moments of use of trying to execute trade in tough times. And I would argue it's better because a Rolex has better perceived value than gold does anywhere in the world. So the gold bugs are lying. And you know they're lying because if they were not lying, and if gold was truly the scarce asset that everyone thinks it is, then every gold mining company would hold gold on their balance sheet. They wouldn't sell it. Why would you dig something up that's so scarce and so rare and then sell it into the market? That doesn't make sense. Find me one gold mining company that has more than 25% of its cash reserves in gold. Like long-term holdings in gold. Right. If you do that, 
and you said it to me, and it's true, 20, more than 25% of its long-term holdings, cash treasury in gold for their own benefit, if someone finds me that, whoever's the first person to find me that, I will give you $500. I will send you $500 in Bitcoin, actually. Because it's not real. These gold companies are incentivized to sell the gold, to turn it into a profit, because they know that the dollars are more valuable than the gold because they can expand the business like that. The gold bug dream has never been real. And I got sucked into it as well. Again, a lot of it was cultural for me. And then a lot of it was listening to people around me that said, you've got to have a gold allocation. The other part that's quite interesting is none of these gold experts, Peter Schiff, Robert Kiyosaki, blah, 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 will ever tell you that you need to go 100% into gold. They'll never tell you that it is the final investment. They'll never tell you that there is no alternative. There's always an alternative. They say, go 10% into gold. What do I do with the other 90? If you're saying that, you know, all of this money is being debased and everything else, what do I do with the other 90% of my wealth? Why can't I put it into gold? Because they know that it doesn't perform. The very fact that gold's supply is adjusted by the demand lever is a problem for a hard asset. Whereas when it comes to Bitcoin, no matter what happens to the demand lever, the price can go up to a billion dollars a coin and the supply cannot be adjusted. And that's what's valuable. That's the point of a hard asset. And to really put it into figures to show you exactly why this is important. I want to show you a chart here of gold valued not in dollars because we already know what the gold value in dollars is $1920 an ounce let's look at gold but valued in the amount of money that's been printed so a lot of people say gold keeps up with inflation and yeah it might do that but does does gold keep up with debasement this is the biggest scam that gold has on people it does not keep up with debasement. This is gold valued in the amount of US dollars being printed. And the peak value that it had was in 1980. And that was even for a brief moment. But even then, if we look and we, and we come back, come all the way through this chart, gold has never ever managed to recapture that value from 1980. And that was when the US dollar was readjusted. So yes, at some point in the future of gold, there may be a revaluation point, and you may have this little spike like there was from 76 all the way up to 1980, and then you better hope you get out at that point, because it's going to come back down. There are moments like this when gold is re revalued against the currency and all the debasement that's happened, but you have to get out. You have to get out and get into something more productive. So gold has never, ever kept this value. The other problem is, let's say you're investing in gold for your children's future. You've literally been losing value every single year holding gold. Literally losing value. Your price hasn't even appreciated because the long-term CAGR on, bit, on, on gold, the last year is great, so everyone's telling you get into gold, it's 15%, that's great. But the 10-year CAGR on gold is like 4%. It's like 4%, it hasn't even beat, beaten inflation let alone debasement. Debasement to me is the real enemy. The real enemy is the amount of dollars that have been printed, not the, not the manipulated inflation figures that they put out there. And gold is not, gold's value in terms of the amount of money that has been printed is down here, right? We're at 1999 level lows approximately in terms of actual value of dollars printed, gold, per, per, gold based on the amount of dollars that have been printed. And of course, you factor this in with the fact that gold can be mined anywhere in the world and there might be a supply of gold coming into the market that you don't know anything about. In fact, I said once I got into Bitcoin, I said this to someone, I said, if you can tell me exactly how many ounces of gold were mined today, I'll put half of my net worth back into gold. Nobody can ever tell you. Is that really the type of investment you want where the supply is unknown? The, the way it makes profit, the way it keeps you wealthy against the value of debasement that's going on is completely unknown because the supply schedule is completely unknown. Is this what you want for, for your wealth? If you're trying to protect your children, you're trying to protect your future, you're trying to protect the value of everything that you've built, what you want is something that's scarce. 
that regularly is going to keep going up, keep going up and maintaining the value against the amount of dollars that have been printed. You don't want something that's going to take 75 years because you might be dead by those 75, by the time those 75 years show up. In fact, Charles Schwab's latest data and, and their investment reports that are coming out now are showing that this new generation doesn't care about gold. It's reducing the percent. Gold is already roughly like 2% of portfolios. That's coming down as $60 trillion is moving from parents to children, grandparents to children. It's moving because young people understand that gold is not the asset that they were promised it to be. So you might have a little bit of gold in your portfolio to feel good. It might be a bearer instrument. But is something really a bearer instrument if you can't take more than $10,000 of it over a border? Because if, you, you, anyway, if you've taken a flight, you know. You've got to fill out that form. Do you have more than $10,000 of cash or cash equivalents? And gold is one of them. If you do, you've got to declare it. And then it's their choice. right? Whereas with Bitcoin, I can take that over with no issues. Right? Got zero issues. Bitcoin is everywhere and nowhere at the exact same time, unlike gold. So my point here is to wake up the gold bugs and release you from the people that have captured you into thinking that the world is terrible, gold is the only thing that can protect you, and that gold is something that has a finite supply to it. Not only does it not have a finite supply, the supply is completely affected by the demand for it which is completely not what it has been promised to be. Therefore, gold, it is, it is, if I'm a miner, it is my incentive to get together with other miners and figure out how to manipulate the price of gold to keep sales high enough while we dig this out of the ground. Therefore, there will never be the supply shock that anyone is talking about because the supply is infinite. The supply is infinite. Whereas with Bitcoin, you know exactly every 10 minutes, exactly where the Bitcoin came out, where it went to, and which address it's sitting on. You know that can never be changed. And you know that if you need to move that Bitcoin, you can do it in an instant. This is why Bitcoin is becoming the base layer asset, which is what gold played a role as. Gold played a role in the past as a base layer asset upon which everything was built on. Bitcoin is that. Because if you can imagine, let's say there are, you know, 30 central banks in the world and they all transact on Bitcoin as like they did with gold. They move Bitcoin from here to there. There's finality of settlement. There's none of this, oh, you know, we'll secure the Bank of England gold in, in Fort Knox and then when we want it, they want to, they're going to cause a problem. No. At the end of the day, I can settle it. Right now, I can settle... $100 billion worth of value in 10 minutes. I don't have to worry about transporting the gold. I don't have to worry about securing the gold. I don't have to worry about none of that. I can transfer the value in 10 minutes. So central banks will move and utilize Bitcoin as a base layer asset. And then on top of that, you could use, for example, US dollars, pounds, just like how it was. You had US dollars that were back 40% by gold. Right. So the U.S. dollars were traveling and being used on top of the gold. So gold is the base layer and the U.S. dollars were on top of that. You can do that with Bitcoin right now. You can have Bitcoin as the base layer and you can have U.S. dollars on top of the Bitcoin rails, which is what Michael Saylor talks about. And that makes a lot of sense. Right. That makes a lot of sense. So the beautiful thing about this is we are heading into a world where unlike gold, where, you know, the inefficiencies of gold are huge as well, right? Like I can't carry this much gold around and spend it. What am I going to do? Shave a little bit off to buy shit with it? That doesn't make any sense. We need something of the future. Gold bugs have been sold a lie that keeps them in the past thinking that going backwards is the only way to go forwards. And that's not true. This is not true at all. And I want to implore you to understand that the lies that you have been told about gold are dangerous to your wealth and the wealth of the people that you are trying to protect because I understand the intention. The intention is all this money is being printed. I need to protect the value that I'm earning. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a businessman. I'm a, I'm a teacher. I'm a mom. I'm a father. I need to protect the value. I get it. But gold is not what we have been promised. And the gold bugs are incentivized to continue telling you this 
so that they can continue selling you the gold at a marked up premium. And you have to realize that for most people, the average person, unless you're buying at a big amount of gold, if you're buying the little bricks, you're handing over 50% more than the value of the gold that's in that brick, which means the gold price has to go up 50% in order for you to just break even. If you buy a one gram bar of gold, and gold price is, let's just say, $2,000 an ounce right now, and there's a 50% premium on that because of economies of scale, the gold price has to go up to $3,000 before you break even on that one gram bar of gold. Whereas with Bitcoin, whether you are a multi-billionaire like Michael Saylor, a millionaire like me, or a street sweeper, we can all buy the same asset without a crazy premium attached to it. And that is the first time in human history that this is possible. So despite all of this, there are still only three rules to Bitcoin. And I hope that I've woken up the gold bugs and I want you to please share this video with the gold bugs. I want you to please subscribe to the channel because if you subscribe to the channel, YouTube realizes and Twitter realizes that more people need to see this and they send it to the right people. And we really have to start saving the gold bugs because they're being captured by the gold promoters for profit. We've got to start saving them. Bitcoin is a revolutionary asset and they're not understanding it. This is extremely important to get this message out there because there are millions of people just like my parents who were brought up on the idea of I need to save in gold. We are not going to take a step backwards to try and move forwards when there is a beautiful new technology called Bitcoin. It is something very important that you need to learn about. If this is the first time you're even thinking about it, take the time and learn about Bitcoin because it actually fulfills the promises that the gold bugs and the gold promoters cashed, wrote on the check for gold, which gold cannot cash out. It is the future and it's important for you to understand it. Despite all of that, whether you do or do not, there are still only three rules to Bitcoin. Step number one, you buy Bitcoin. Step number two, shut the fuck up. And step number three, you get fabulously wealthy.